There are countless masterpieces for solo violin with orchestra, just as fantastic arias for soprano are a dime a dozen. The repertoire for the cello, however, is much more limited, long considered exclusively an accompanimental instrument. The cello was a melodic late bloomer, and even during the Romantic era, when the instrument had already proved itself an equal, few large-scale works emerged that truly exploited its expressive range. Of the handful of concerti written for the instrument, one stands out as the backbone of this repertoire. When Brahms saw the score for this work, he remarked, why on earth didn't I know that one could write a cello concerto like this? If I had only known, I would have written one long ago. The masterpiece that altered Brahms' perception of one of the loveliest of lower stringed instruments was the Dvorak Cello Concerto in B minor. Dvorak wrote his cello concerto during his third term as director of the National Conservatory of Music in New York, a school founded by Jeanette Thurber, wife of a wealthy wholesale grocer. While Dvorak abhorred the big city, he deemed the position satisfactory enough to re-sign his contract for a third year. Dvorak appreciated the financial advantages of being in the United States, but missed his homeland of Bohemia dearly. Unlike the New World Symphony or the American Quartet, Dvorak's cello concerto, the vast majority of which he composed in this country as well, has none of the glorious Americana of the previous two, but instead, an abundance of bohemian pastoral lyricism. Not only is this concerto's wistful nature reflective of Dvorak's homesick longings, but of his lovesick memories as well. Wood reached Dvorak during the composition of the work that Josefina Kotnitsova, his sister-in-law, had taken ill back home. Dvorak had been in love with Josefina and decided to honor her by including one of her favorite songs of his, a short piece from his Opus 82 entitled Leave Me Alone in the second movement of the piece. Shortly after Dvorak returned to Bohemia, Josefina died, and the composer again added new material in tribute. This second added passage is one of the most stunning and poignant sections of the concerto, a hushed 60 bars just before the end of the finale, including recollections of the first theme of the first movement and again the song, Leave Me Alone. It remains a very special and heartfelt moment, a unique and emotional turn in an already passionate and highly expressive work. Atakar Serak, the composer's biographer, described the passage as a note of almost incoherent happiness at being home at last in his beloved Bohemia. The cellist Alwyn Schroeder was the first to perform Dvorak's concerto with the Boston Symphony. It was during a series of concerts at the Boston Music Hall, the orchestra's downtown home before Symphony Hall was built, under Emil Power on December 18th and 19th, 1896. Schroeder went on to perform the piece twice more at Carnegie Hall in 1899 and back at the Boston Music Hall in 1900, both performances under Wilhelm Guericke. The next two cellists to perform the piece were members of the orchestra itself, pulled from its ranks and elevated to soloist status. Heinrich Warnke and after him, Otto Urach performed the concerto during subscription series in 1905-1906 and 1912, respectively. Warnke played in the orchestra from 1905 to 1918, and Urach, who also conducted the Boston Pops, performed with the ensemble from 1912 to 1914. Jean Bedetti, a member of the BSO from 1919 to 1948, also played the piece on January 23, 1923, under Pierre Monteur. After that, however, the job fell largely to traveling soloists and virtuosi. Pierre Gorsky performed Dvorak's cello concerto for the first time with the ensemble under Kuzovitsky on December 24 through the 26, 1936, and went on to make two appearances with the orchestra, both under Schau Münch. In February of 1960, Pierre Fournier, Leonard Rose, and André Navarra also played the concerto under Münch in 1954, 1956, and 1962 accordingly. 
Rose appeared with the BSO, playing Dvorak under Leinsdorf as well in 1965, as did Mitsislav Rostropovich, who went on to play the piece under Seiji Ozawa in 1976, 85, 87, and 2002, and recorded it with the conductor for Electra in 1992. Another dear friend of the BSO who performed this work several times with them over the years is Yo-Yo Ma. Not only did Yo-Yo perform the work in 1983, 84, 88, 96, and 2001 with Ozawa, but he also contributed to the Boston Symphony's famous Dvorak tribute concert in Prague in 1993. Joining Itzhak Perlman, Frederica von Stade, the Czech Philharmonic Chorus, and others, Mr. Ma played several short works in celebration of the great Bohemian composer. The concert was filmed and released on DVD and VHS in a production entitled Dvorak in Prague. Along with his performances under Seiji, Yo-Yo played the concerto under David Zinman at Tanglewood in 1992, and most recently in 2007 under James Levine with a blockbuster crowd at the shed and on the lawn. The first member of the BSO cello section to get the nod since Bedetti's appearance in 1923 was principal cellist Jules Eskin, who performed the concerto at Tanglewood in August of 1970 under Charles McCarris. Other soloists over the years include Joseph Malkin under Karl Mook in 1917, Zara Nelsova under Ernest Ansemey in 1951, Stephen Cates under Eric Leinsdorf in 1966, Franz Helmerson under Leonard Bernstein, and Seiji Ozawa on consecutive nights in 1981, Misha Maisky under Robert Spano in 1993, and Lynn Harrell under Roger Norrington in 1996. It's a testament to the Boston Symphony that this list forms an almost complete who's who of the greatest cellists of the last 100 years. Join us on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday during the weekend of November 13th and hear this glorious masterpiece back at Symphony Hall performed by one of the best cellists on the circuit today, Albin Gerhardt. Marakinovsky leads the orchestra in support of Mr. Gerhardt and also in a performance of Beethoven's most beloved Sunny Symphony, the Sixth. As previously mentioned, the music for this podcast comes from a commercially available recording of the Dvorak Cello Concerto with the BSO and Seiji Ozawa, supporting one of his favorite collaborators on the piece, Mitsislav Rostropovich. At UBS, financial solutions come from listening carefully to what our clients say, but even more carefully to what they don't say. You could call it understanding. We just call it you and us, UBS.